So you're considering making a move to Tampa, Florida, and you're wondering what the cost of living is. More importantly, you're wondering how it's gonna affect your pocketbook. Well, in this video, we're gonna cover just that. And let me tell you, over the last year, things have definitely changed. So make sure you stick around. We're gonna get into it right now. Well, in today's video, we're gonna get into this. Cost of living has shifted, and I know this isn't news to anyone, right? Whether you're living in rural Mississippi, New York, San Diego, California, Ottawa, wherever it is, all of our cost of living has increased dramatically over the last two years. We've all been dealing with inflation, we've all had record housing prices increase, and just dealing with all of these other prices just, just never seem to go down anymore. Well, what I wanted to do is give you guys an update, you know, here in Tampa, Florida, so you can really wrap your mind around what it is like to live in the Tampa Bay area. And we get these questions all the time. And hey, if we've never been introduced before, my name is Juan Alcala. I'm a licensed real estate agent and a team leader here with the True Living Group. And I help people just like you buy, sell, relocate, invest in the Tampa Bay area. However, you got to get a hold of us, whether that's through phone call, text message, email, heck, you can even DM me on Instagram. Just know that I got your back when it comes to making that move. There's even a link to my calendar down below so you can schedule a time that works best for you. So let's get right into this top five. And what I want to do is I want to set this up. Over the last couple of years, we've been using a website called bestplaces.net. And I'll put the link to it down below. That way you have access to it. But what Best Places does is it takes a, a large group of metropolitan areas and really starts to define what it costs to live there. Now, there's a bunch of other sites too that we've used in the past, but this one I think works really well. And I'm gonna what I'm going to do today is I'm going to share that, but I'm also going to share my personal expenses with you guys so you can kind of wrap your mind around it. Because I know sometimes it's hard to equate, well, you know, what if someone's got a four bedroom home versus a two bedroom apartment or a condo or, you know, all these things are different. So we wanted to do is share some real life examples with you today in these five categories. And the five categories we're going to be covering today are these groceries, housing, utility, transportation, and healthcare. Now, I'll give an overall at the end too, but what I really wanted to do is break down into these five categories because these are the ones that really affect most of us on a day-in, day-out basis. So I think that they're gonna be most helpful and we're gonna get into them right now. And oh, before we go any further, if you haven't taken the time to subscribe to this channel, please do so. It really helps other people just like you find this channel. Make sure you hit that little like button so you can be notified every time we drop another video just like this as well. But let's get right into it. So number one, let's talk about groceries because this one is a heated debate in my household. Actually, it's not a debate. It's basically me being told by my wife that things are getting really expensive. And I know that everyone is experiencing this because we've got family back home in Detroit. You know, we've got friends and, uh, and family all over the country and they've been saying the same thing to us, right? The cost of, of proteins like steak and chicken and, and beef are going way up and same thing with their, with their vegetables. I mean, avocados are outrageous. Like I know we're all feeling it right now, but the thing I wanted to do is give you perspective because the way that bestplaces.net sets this up is they, they make an average. And then what they say is if the United States um, is our baseline, then we're going to call the average 100. Okay. So that would be everybody's at 100. If you're more expensive, that your number is going to be above 100. If you're less expensive, your number is going to be below 100. So that's how they give these rankings. And according to bestplaces.net, groceries here in Tampa are, we're at 105.1 on that index. Now, here's what I'll say. When we made our move from Detroit to Tampa, you know, four years ago, we literally just moved four years ago um, at the time of this recording, which is super exciting to remember that. But what I noticed right away is our grocery bill went up about 15%, right, from Detroit. Now, Detroit groceries at the time were a little bit less expensive than the national average, so that makes sense. Um, but when we got down here, we definitely experienced that. And, you know, the groceries here are good. We don't have any issue with that. The quality of our groceries actually, I think, have gotten better. So I do feel like I'm getting more for for my money in terms of quality, but I'm definitely not getting more for my money in terms of quantity. And again, I know this isn't um, exclusive to anyone in Tampa, but I want to give you know the ranking that they're putting together here. And I also wanted to talk about who the grocers are because I know one of the things that we weren't aware of, you know, moving from Detroit, Michigan, we had groceries like grocery stores like Kroger. 
and Meyer, which is a regional grocery chain. We had Costco, we had Whole Foods, um, we had a, a grocery store called Fresh Time, which was kind of like a competitor of uh, Whole Foods. We shopped for foods there a lot. My wife loved to go shopping there and she shopped at Costco for the rest of our foods. And here where we shop is Publix. It's a Florida owned grocery chain. Um, they are wonderful. Um, they're a throwback to you know the 50s and 60s. When you go get groceries at Publix, they literally will walk your gro to your car and put Put your groceries in the car for you. I think that's really cool. To me alone, that was worth the exchange of, of extra finances to, to make my grocery bill happen. But here's what I know. At the time of this recording right now, it definitely feels like we're getting less for our money. I don't think it's exclusive to Tampa. Again, the index is there saying that we're a little bit higher than average, you know, that we're at 105 versus 100. And I think that that's true. It is no shock to me. So the second thing on our list today is housing. And I want to get into this. And you guys know I'm a licensed real estate agent. So I'm going to give it to you straight here because a lot of the times people watch this channel and they're wondering what my agenda is. And yes, I get paid to help people buy, sell, and relocate in the area. But it's not because it's an agenda. It's because I love to live here. It's just my profession. I get to do this, not have to do it. I love sharing it with you. So let me get into this, okay? So right now, bestplaces.net is saying that Tampa is 105.2 on this index. So again, we're uh, 5.2 points above the national average, but here's what I want you to know. The current national median sales price, if we look at the United States, is $397,500. Here in Tampa, Florida, it's $400,000. So we are slightly above that number in terms of uh, the national average, but here's the thing I want you to know. Most people in the United States don't have access to the Gulf of Mexico. There is nothing average about the Gulf of Mexico. There's nothing average about the 235 days plus of sunshine we get every single year. That is why we move, right? I love my family back home in Detroit. I love the fact that we're from Detroit. I am proud of that, but I couldn't wait to bust out of Metro Detroit and get to some place where you didn't have to deal with gray, dreary weather for six to seven months out of the year. You didn't have to worry about de-icing your car. You didn't have to worry about crashing into a, a you know a median because it was freezing outside. You know, we have our own things to deal with down here. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it's perfect. And you guys can check out my pros and cons. I go deep into that. But in terms of the, the housing cost, I have a team of, of licensed real estate agents back home in Detroit. We sell at the exact same price point there in, in the suburbs of Detroit that we do here in Tampa. So to me, it's a no-brainer. Wherever you're coming from, this is the thing you gotta look at. And here's what I wanted to, to frame here because because if you're moving from a place like Seattle, Washington, Portland, Oregon, San Diego, California, the northern uh, side of Ca uh, California, New Jersey, New York, Tampa is a deal. It's still a deal. And I know this because we have clients that move from those areas, they sell their homes, they come here and pay cash with the proceeds that they've netted from selling their home in those areas. And that is why Tampa has had this huge boom. Obviously with people's ability to work remotely, that's helped as well. But when people look at us from around the country, they recognize the value here in Tampa because to me, $400,000 to live in a coastal town is crazy inexpensive. Now, where you live, it might be the complete opposite of that. But what I found is, you know, again, relatively speaking, we are right there at the national average and we have sunshine, we have beaches, and it is just absolutely incredible here. And what we're going to do is we're going to pin a link um, down below. I'll share these numbers with you guys. And um, Les, if you don't mind, do me a favor, put up the national average up here um, right now, if you don't mind, that 397. And then what I'm going to have him do also is I'm going to have you put the Tampa price here as well on this side. So you guys can see it for you through your own eyes through an independent third party. We're going to use Redfin so you guys can see it right there. So I wanted to share that with you guys. All right. The third thing on our list here is utilities. And what it's saying here on the on best places again is that Tampa is underperforming in terms of cost. Yay. <laughs> for utilities comes in at 96.3 on the index here, which would have us lower than the national average. And um, I think that's interesting because we got here and some things cost more money, other things cost less. But I wanna share you with you guys what our utility costs are every month because this is the one thing I get asked all the time. People are like, well, what does it cost to, to cool your home? You know, because it's so hot all the time. And that's a great question. It's one of the ones that we wanted answers to. So I wanna share with you some of our, our bills. So bear with me, I'm gonna read them to you. 
year. So our electric bill on average every single month, and I've checked this with my wife, so I know that these are dialed in today, right, before I got on this video with you guys. Um, our electricity bill on average every single month is $250. We don't have a gas bill because everything runs off electric in our home. You can have houses that have gas stoves, but it's not uh, that's not common. Um, it, that would be the minority, uh, not, not the majority here. Um, so we don't pay a gas bill. Our water heater and our stove and our um, pool pump, air conditioner, all run off electricity. So our entire house is powered by electricity. So 250 bucks a month. Now, in the peak, we're talking about July, August, September. When it's super hot, that number definitely goes up. You know, we'll have bills as high as $400, but I wanna put things in perspective for you guys here in a minute. But in the winter, when we can open up our windows and we're not cooling our house at all, those bills will go down below 200 bucks. So it's a really nice average. On average, we're doing 250. So just so you guys know, no gas bill, like we said. Here's the thing that is expensive for us. Water and sewer are $100 every month. That is way more money than I was spending back home in Detroit. Now, I don't know if it's because we had the Great Lakes up there. I don't know the differences between the two and why the municipalities cost so much more. Um, our water quality here is nowhere near what it was in Michigan either. Again, spoiled with the Great Lakes and Florida water just is not good, y'all. I don't care what anybody tells you. Get a filtration system when you come because you're going to need it. All right. Now, trash. Trash is expensive too. Currently, we're paying $45 a month, which is outrageous. So my wife and I were just talking about going back and looking at this because when we moved down four years ago, it was like 32 bucks a month and they seems like they raise it every six months. Now, what's cool is we're not limited to one trash provider. We can, there's three companies that come on our block alone. So we can go look at that and we're going to because that's a pretty gnarly number. So trash at 45 bucks for us is crazy. But on average, what I'm seeing with my clients is 35 bucks a month, okay? Now, the other one is Frontier. So down here, we've got Spectrum and Frontier are the two big horses here. Um, we're blessed enough to have fiber optics running our, our um, internet here. I've got a gig up, gig down. I feel completely spoiled because I had like 150 megabytes per second when we lived in Detroit. I know I'm nerding out, but for anybody that works from home, this stuff's important, y'all. And I pay $75 a month for a gig up and gig down, and I don't think that's expensive at all. We were paying well over $100 when we moved down from Detroit. So to me, I can see how that's cheaper here. There's no doubt about it. I did want to talk about the, the average size home here because I think it's important uh, to kind of wrap your mind around. I don't want to just skip ahead. So to give you perspective, we're paying 250 bucks a month on average. We have a four bedroom home that's 2,000 square foot. Um, we we don't have the newest windows. Um, our air conditioner is new. I'm not sure how it well insulated the walls are because our home was built in 1977. I've never had to tear them open yet. And we do have a pool. So a pump runs all day long. And that thing's not very efficient. So we're larger than the, the median home here. So the, the median home size in Tampa is a three bedroom, two bath, 1800 square foot home. We're a four to 2000. So I just wanted to kind of give you a little bit relative perspective on that. So if we're paying 250, let's say you had a three bedroom and you didn't have a pool, you would probably only be paying 200 a month on average or can maybe even less if you had newer, more efficient appliances and um, really well insulated home and great windows because we're just not there. Um, so I just wanted to give you guys that perspective. Okay, the fourth thing on this list is transportation. Now this one is very interesting. Um, it says that we're 112.1. So pretty high over the national average of 100 there, 12.1 um, points to be exact. And again, I'm gonna share my perspective because what I have seen is the cost of ownership for my vehicle has went down here. A few different reasons, and again, I want you to compare this versus where you are. It may be you know, expensive, but the first thing I wanna talk about is, is our gas prices. At the time of this recording, gas is currently $3.09 a gallon. Um, it's well up over the last two years. I'm not getting into that argument about why or not, but relative to um, our family who lives in Michigan or when we travel, we're, we appear to be on average cheaper than other places in America. Check this out at the time of this recording. You guys are gonna see it within two weeks at least of this video coming out. Um, so it'll be pretty quick so you can kind of compare it then. You know, gas is cheap here. So I'm already getting a deal on that. The other thing that I save money on here in Tampa that um, I is a blessing is in Michigan, the roads are terrible. We have some of the worst roads in the United States, hands down. When you drive into Michigan, you know it immediately because the fillings in your mouth start to come loose and that's not a joke, right? So when we moved down here, man, we were so blessed. Like I think the last pothole we really hit was 
in Kentucky when we drove down. And then all of a sudden the roads get really smooth. And since we've lived here, we've really experienced that. Now, why is that important? Well, we didn't have great roads. So every three years, my vehicles, when we lived in Michigan, would have to go in and get a front end alignment. They would have to get either new ball joints, sway bar end links, uh, bushings, like uh, hub bearing. Something was going bad in the front end because these things were constantly being shaken around and jacked up. They were just terrible. Not to mention the road salt. All that stuff is bad on your vehicles. You, you know, you run over these potholes and they bend your rims. I, it's just crazy. And listen, this is not hyperbole, y'all. This is real. Like what I'm sharing with you is real. So we moved down here. I no longer have those expenses, right? Like we brought a, a, a brand new vehicle and a 2013 used Volks, Volkswagen. And since we've moved here, I have put version Actually, no money into my Volkswagen. None. The tires <laughs> have not been changed. Like it is still in great condition. And we get serviced regularly by the dealership. So they tell you when something's wrong. So like we're saving money there. Our public transportation system, according to the people who use it, are not great. I don't. So I don't want to, you know, pretend like I understand all that, but I want to share with you what those options are. We have the Sunrunner, which is in down in St. Pete, and right now that's free as because they just got that up and running. We've got the streetcar in Tampa, which is free, which is really cool too. And then you've got the heart system, which is the bus system there. And you can basically ride the bus all day for about three bucks a day. You can get a monthly pass, so it makes it cheaper, I believe. I think it gets it down to $2 a day. And then we do have some toll roads, not majority of our roads are not toll, but if you're gonna go over the Skyway Bridge or you're gonna go into I-4 towards you know, Orlando, there are points when you get to that. And then the Veteran Memorial Highway, which runs north and south uh, or north of Tampa there, that is also a tollway. We put 20 bucks on our, our Sun Pass and we usually don't have to fill that thing up for a quarter at least, literally for three months. So I don't see this from where I came from. If you, you know, you've been here before and you think the transportation is expensive compared to where you are, let me know in the chat down below, you know, where it is expenses. And hey, while you're down there, you might as well hit that subscribe button and click that little bell. And also, if maybe you're not moving, but you know somebody who is considering moving to the area, please feel free to share this video with them. I'm sure they get a lot of value out of it and they really appreciate your help too. So let's get into the, the fifth and final one here, which is healthcare. Now, the bestplaces.net has got us ranked at 100.3 on this list, so we're just above the national average. And again, I wanna share what I know of this with you guys. Um, we, and I, in the interest of full transparency here, um, our family has is blessed with our health. So we don't have to be in the hospital systems You know, at the time of this recording. Things might change for us in the future, but from our um, well visits and for the few trips we've had to have to um, urgent care or the emergency room, I don't see any difference in pricing. So that's you know reflected in in, uh, in my pocketbook, um, you know. So I can say you know, this is what I've seen here. We're definitely falling in line with that average. It doesn't feel any different to me. I pay almost the exact same amount of money to go to urgent care here that we did when we were back home in Detroit. It went and if we had to go. Same thing for well visits. I don't think anything's out of whack. You know, we get massages in terms of a wellness from time to time. It's not something we do on a regular basis. I don't do it at all, but um, I do do that for my wife because she's incredible, y'all. <laughs> um, but yeah, she hasn't never said anything. And I used to buy her gift certificates to do that when we live back home and, and it hasn't changed. So we see the same things there. Um, now, I want to talk about some of those hospital systems we do have in the area so you guys can kind of wrap your mind around that. Oh, and I skipped over the groceries, so I want to get back to that too. We've got HCA in terms of our health care. We've got Moffitt Cancer Center, which they're in the process of building a 760 acre, I believe, um, research cancer center up in Angeline, which is uh, just north of Lando Lakes, Florida. For those of you who are interested in the northern suburbs, that Wesley Chapel, Lando Lakes, Lutz, Odessa area, which we've done done videos on in the past. You can check that stuff out there. Um, but they're building this huge research cancer center there. Um, and they're going to uh, put a, a few thousand homes around that. It's going to have a farm in the community there and, you know, 20 miles of bike trails and all this green space. It's pretty cool. You can go check that out. Actually, I'll put that in the description down below as well. We've got Bay Care here in the Tampa Bay area. You, as you guys know, or maybe you don't, but we live close to the water here. Um, we're only a couple miles away from the Gulf of Mexico, but in Clearwater, you've got Bay Care, and Bay Care is all, all the way through the Bay for obvious reasons. You got Tampa General Hospital, and then we've got an excellent VA um, hospital here too, down in St. Petersburg, Florida. Beautiful facility down there. It's recognized as uh, one of the top VA hospitals in the entire country. They will duke it out with San Diego occasionally 
as well. And then we also have a VA in Tampa. So just want to kind of give you guys that perspective. I think it's helpful to know that. And real quick, let me go back to the grocers so I don't forget, you know, because um, you're probably, if you're in the West Coast, you got Safeway, right? If you're in the Northeast, you got things like Food Lion, um, you know, and I wanted to kind of give some relative perspective from what I understand. So Publix to us would be, I would equate that to like, um, to uh, Safeway or Kroger or um, Food Lion, I think. Um, we have Winn-Dixie here, which is probably, um, it's definitely a, a, a step down from what I would consider Publix in terms of their quality. They're also cheaper. Um, we have Walmart, of course, just like everyone else. Um, we have uh, Walmart Fresh Markets, which they're trying to compete a little bit more with Publix, so I'll see them closer to that. We have Whole Foods here, which uh, most people do. There's one St. Pete, Tampa, and in Clearwater, um, right off the top of my head. Um, we have Sprouts, which is a, a relative competitor. You know, they're coming in and trying to grab some market share away from Whole Foods. So I wanted to share that. I didn't want to lose sight of that, guys. Forgive me for jumping over that, too. Um, you know, oh, and I want to jump back into housing, too. I know I'm kind of all over the place, but forgive me, but this stuff's important, and when I get going on these videos, I don't script them. What I do is uh, share with you guys what's going on there. But we were talking about housing and we were talking about the overall cost of these things, right? Like na uh, Tampa being on that national average. The thing that we most people do ask is like, okay, what about insurance? Because they've heard a lot about what's going on with our insurance. Insurance has been a problem. I did an entire live video where I brought an insurance specialist onto our channel. Um, I'll have that linked right here. You can check that out. Her name was Ashley Boyle. She's incredible. Man, what a what a resource she was. She was incredible. But on average, you know, I want to. I just want to give a general. I'm not giving insurance quotes, just so everybody knows. Um, insurance uh, to 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 insure a home here in the Tampa Bay area, you know, that's 1,800 square foot. It starts at about 2,000. That's really the cheapest that I've seen it. Now, if you've got insurance cheaper than that, please put it down there below. Again, I'm not the authority on this. I don't sell insurance but I just know what I see from my clients. But what I've been seeing more often is the four bedroom homes are coming in at, you know, $25 to $3,500 um, annually for that insurance cost. Our taxes in the area, on average, I'm seeing about 1.25 to 1.5% for your property taxes. Again, if you live in New Jersey and you're being charged 2.75 or 3%, like, you know, these numbers are nuts. I've seen those numbers on the West Coast, New York, New Jersey, where people were literally selling their homes and getting six months of their mortgage paid for here with the same money they would have paid on their property taxes. It's crazy when you think about that. Um, and last but not least is CDD fees, which is Community Development District fees. Um, that is when they build an entire community and you're allowed to use all of the amenities in the community. They might have three pools, three parks, dog parks, all kinds of stuff. And then in the neighborhood, next door they have those things too and you have access to them they call that a community development those have fees associated with them they're similar to an HOA but you also have HOA fees um, a lot of the times those HOA fees will include things like trash like I was talking about earlier um, they may even include things like internet I'm seeing that more and more often too there's areas like the lagoons up in Wesley Chapel uh, that include trash and uh, internet and basic cable in your HOA so really cool that that's kind of uh, rolled into there but you're still paying for it no matter what so i just wanted to share that with you guys i i know i've been talking a mile a minute here but i wanted to give you an update on what's going on with the the cost of living here in 2023 what you can expect in the 2024 and beyond we will always keep these videos updated and refreshed um, i want to thank you for your time if you haven't taken the time to subscribe and like please do it remember you can reach out to us whether that's through phone call text message email dm on instagram just know that when it comes to buying selling relocating or investing in the Tampa Bay area, we've got your back. And until next time, go out and live that Tampa life.